some data from the Enigma Envy working group. So basically, I will show you some of our most recent results on the cortical meta-analysis. Um, but Chris also asked me to show some of the um, cortical uh, QA issues that we encountered, or not really issues, but we collected information from all the sites, which areas were most problematic, etc. And we made kind of a PowerPoint um, that we can send out to sites uh, showing some of the issues and some probable uh, potential solutions. Um, so I wouldn't call it a, a cortical QA guideline, but um, it might help uh, identifying some of the cortical QA issues or some of the regions that need to be inspected a bit. So, very shortly, something about the Enigma NDV Working Group. Currently, we have 18 samples from nine different countries worldwide. And, um, yeah, as you can see, quite globally distributed. Um, as I think Jason asked, we have a site in Nova Sibiris, so quite exotic. <laughs> quite proud of that one. Um, although we are still lacking some of the South American African uh, continents. So this is an overview, I'm not sure whether you can see it, uh, of all the sites currently involved. Um, most of them, uh, up until, oh no, it's not. Most of them were also involved in the uh, subcortical uh, subcortical meta-analysis. But recently some new um, sites joined from Houston, Nova Sibiris, also Mun Munster. I don't know how we missed this large sample in UV subjects, but they recently joined. So currently we have about 2,100 MVD cases and about 8,000 controls. Um, and we have information about the um, number of patients with a recurrent episode versus first episode patients, um, the number of uh, patients that are currently on antidepressant medication, age of onset, in some of the uh, samples we have severity measures. So we also look at specifically at associations with clinical characteristics and as Jessica also showed, like moderator analysis with maybe methodological differences or uh, mean age, etc. So and actually we did ask the new groups to also do the subcortical QA and the subcortical protocols. Um, first to start with cortical protocols, but also to add the subcortical ones because they can in that way, they can also join in uh, with secondary proposals that, um, that also includes subcortical measures as well as, I think in the future, we would like to do an update uh, of our subcortical analysis and perhaps even a meta-analysis just as a sanity check. So the first two projects were the subcortical and the cortical meta-analysis. And I will just briefly show you the results of the subcortical meta-analysis, um, but mostly talk about the cortical uh, analysis. So, as Paul already mentioned, our first paper is currently in press, also in molecular psychiatry. And um, basically the main finding, uh, which was quite interesting compared to schizophrenia and also bipolar disorder, we, we only found um, differences between patients and controls in the hippocampus and not for the other regions. And when we looked into clinical associations, clinical characteristics a little bit uh, further, oh, that's not on here, we, these were mainly driven by recurrent episode patients. We didn't see any differences between first episode patients and controls, um, as well as early, ep uh, early onset patients. So, we divided patients into early onset um, with a cutoff of 21, which was a bit arbitrary. Um, and later, age of onset patients, because if we uh, did it dimensionally, um, we got some collinearity problems with age in the same model. Um, and basically, we saw that the hippocampal findings were driven by recurrent episode patients and early age of onset patients, which, was partly, uh, which were partly independent effects as well. We also looked at antidepressant medication. Um, 
but we didn't find any effects there. We saw a trend also again for the hippocampus, mm. but we saw it in a different direction. So normally you would maybe expect um, patients on antidepressant medication showing an increase mm. in hippocampal volume, but we actually saw a decrease. But I have to say, I, I don't think this kind of cross-sectional design is very suitable for examining antidepressant effect because we didn't have a lot of uh, data, so a lot of sites didn't have data on uh, duration of illness, of uh, antidepressant use. So the current, it was currently taking antidepressants, yes, no, mm. which, yeah, I mean, same. no, it's not the same. So probably confounded by um, severity. Yeah. So when we included recurrence into the model of antidepressant use, the whole uh, effect disappeared. So, just something about the free surface of cortical quality check. So, basically, all the sites did the quality assurance according to the Enigma protocols. And then we asked, are there specific uh, issues you encountered, uh, consistencies um, in certain regions that you find uh, that are badly parcelated? Um, and I think we got a few remarks. Um, that compared to the subcortical volumes, people found the cortical QA a bit more difficult. So, um, because with the subcortical volumes, some of the, the structures are pretty well outlined, and if you're not sure, you can also overlay it um, and make it more transparent, and you can see the boundaries a bit better. Whereas with the cortical parcellation, some people say, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. I mean clear, badly parcelated regions, okay, but the rest, is this, is this good, is this bad? So that was a, a general uh, remark, um, which makes also makes exclusion of uh, bad regions a bit arbitrary, and um, some, and some sites, sites perform manual editing and some don't, so we might have to do something with that as well in a later stage. So, of course, you all know the good examples. This was a very bad example. <laughs> this was actually a, a true example. So that's very obvious. Uh, but we found a few issues. I will just go through them very quickly. For example, the, the banks of the superior temporal solstice, um, which is this, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but it's this dark green blob, which in, I think, 20, 30% of the cases will um, will show on the on the lateral surface. Mm -hmm. Should be a bit more medial, it's, it's a bit folded in here. And some of the the examples here, which we we marked as badly parcelated uh, examples, because it actually uh, covers or um, a large part of, of for example the medial or uh, the middle or superior from a uh, temporal gyrus is assigned to this to this region hmm. so we ask people to exclude it however um, also some we also give some examples if you just see it it's a bit arbitrary of course but if you just see a little block which you see in in a lot of cases almost most cases we say you can you can keep it hmm. another example is um, that sometimes part of the um, uh, superior temporal gyrus is assigned to the supramarginal gyrus. So, if this is the case, we ask people to exclude, exclude both regions for the subject. And this is a bit of a tricky one, because this, to me, it doesn't look very nice. Um, this, this, these are the um, uh, parahippocampal and the uh, gyrus and the enterhinal cortex, which seems to be missing quite a bit here as well. But this example is detected in about 70 or 80 percent of the cases. So, excluding those regions, you, know, you might end up with, with no subjects with these regions at all. So, eventually, we chose to um, advise the site to only exclude when there's like clearly a large part missing of one of the regions. And another issue is, which is um, 
very important for MVB um, is that this specific atlas doesn't have a, a specific region for the subgeneral FCC. So this structure is assigned to either the Inchalan or um, the medial OFC. This is a bit weird here when it becomes the Inchalan, but because it's a there's not really a, a, a subgeneral FCC region. We just ask the sites to report on how many of the cases um, this region is assigned to the insula. Um, I'm not sure yet what we will do with the information, but I think it's, it's, it's important to know. So summarizing, most issues are related to the temporal load. Um, and other issues were found with the entorhinal cortex um, and some other uh, maybe smaller issues um, with allocation of the um, insula at the at location of the subgeneral FCC um, and, and yeah again with temporal regions sometimes they overlap. So there are some solutions for this coming from the free server website. This PowerPoint is, is also available on the Enigma website, so um, we used it to send it out to sites and ask them to, to pay specific attention to these regions. Um, so you can read a bit more about this on the website. Because I also wanted to show some of the first results of our cortical analysis, so um, in contrast to, to Derek, we choose to uh, use a meta-analysis for the cortical uh, structures as well. Uh, like we did for the subcortical ones, because we have quite a, a few samples that, uh, large samples that are not willing or not able to share raw data. So, we're basically um, the main projects are the subcortical projects and the cortical projects, um, but we also have um, secondary projects. So, for example, Thomas Frodo is looking at the effects of childhood maltreatment on brain volumes. Um, Miguel from uh, Marty's group is looking at the effects of suicidal thoughts on brain volume. Um, Philip is um, is looking is going to look at hippocampal subfields, so just to follow up our subcortical um, findings in the hippocampus uh, in relation to MVD. And I think Chris will talk about the subfields. Um, so we're working on um, quality check protocols, etc. And um, Felix Fischer and Matthias Rose are also looking at into RIT methods to uh, obtain some kind of standardized common metric for all the different severity questionnaires that are used. But until now, it wasn't, uh, hasn't been very successful. Um, so, and we would really like to do as a next step is to do some imaging genetics analysis. So, uh, we might need to team up with other people from Enigma to see what what's the best way to go forward, uh, either polygenic risk scores or other types of analysis. Um, a lot of sites, or a lot of sites, a substantial amount of sites also have DTI and resting site data, so it would be really good to look into that as well. And um, that's, I think, also a bit of a personal um, with what I have been working on locally a lot is on machine learning, so that's basically also something we would like to do, perhaps also in collaboration to make my machine learning at the core. So these are all the participating sites and the funding, so I'm very grateful to for all the great efforts.